the first thing that happens is the virus says, oh, cool, I can propagate. Yeah. <laughs> A listener you just, use in dollar words in a 50 cent sentence. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I can propagate. I can propagate. <laughs> look at him. I can propagate. You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax. HIPAA help is on the way. Hello and welcome to episode 19 of the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. And today we're going to discuss vulnerabilities in your smartphone. So speaking of smart things, welcome Donna. How are you? <laughs> I'm thing one, you're thing two, right? I started to call you smart something else, but it, I stopped myself. <laughs> <laughs> Just in time. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to keep our little clean mark on uh, the podcast. So don't miss speak about I got the smart it. Of what parts of me are smart. I got it. I got it. Luckily, I have that thing between your brain and your mouth that slows things down just enough. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> it doesn't always work. <laughs> but anyway, so today we're going to look at some things around mobile devices and smartphones in particular because they have to have attention too because the mobile device market smartphones and tablets and all that have really started to integrate into not just our daily lives, but also our businesses. And we're starting to see these more and more within practices and they can't be ignored. There's a lot of vulnerabilities around letting your employees use these devices and how those devices are being used within your practice. So let's take a look at some of those vulnerabilities and what you can do to hopefully mitigate some of those. So what do you want to start with, Donna? Well, I thought we'd start with actually talking about how it relates to HIPAA. The first thing is because if you're using the phones for business at any level, then there's potential for vulnerabilities that could be used against you. So they should be on your risk analysis and that the phones themselves, people say, I don't, I don't have any PHI on there, but... Then when you start asking about, well, do you ever call a patient from that phone uh, if you need to? Well, yeah, their phone number and the information is there. Do you ever get a text from the office that could potentially change things? Do you use apps that you get secure text with? Well, that's great, but are you making sure that your phone's secured so that you can't just use the app when you're in there? So there's a lot of things to worry about, plus the cases of people using their phones innocently at work. Uh, that then turns into other vulnerabilities. And uh, we mm -hmm. can talk about that a little bit. So on to the issue at hand of how do you worry about the security of your smartphone? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the areas uh, that you and I, and I am an Apple iOS person and David is an Android person. Mm -hmm. And uh <laughs> We, neither one of us, I, I have never even used a Windows phone, but they have such small market share. I wasn't going to add in the efforts on how to do things on that in this discussion. Is that okay with you, David? Yeah, that's fine. I've never used one. Well, I'll take that back. I did use like a Windows phone when they came out with the very first smartphones, like way back. Yeah. When it actually looked like it had Windows 3.1 on it. <laughs> <laughs> what they look like yeah i think but, uh, i think they're kind of slowly going to give up the ghost on that with stuff they're doing in windows 10 it looks like you know it may not be yeah feature. but i've had a i've had an iphone and then i migrated over to a samsung android phone because i wanted to uh experience that side as well and I, i've been pleased with it mm -hmm. and so um not knocking the iphones i think the good thing about Android is that it offers a lot of flexibility. The bad thing about Android is that it offers a lot of flexibility. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about so, that. You know, to get flexibility, you lose security. You give up security when you have some flexibility in things. So it's mm -hmm. all about the balance, like always. Yep. So then let's talk about the operating systems themselves and keeping them up to date. So the iOS, which is the Apple operating system, it'll just nag you to install patches and things like that. And it does a lot of that. It's the Donna OS. <laughs> just <laughs> nags and nags. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and don't you forget it. You're going to need to load that. You're going to need to do a risk analysis. You're going to need to document. Yeah, that's what I do. 
old <laughs> naggy haggy. <laughs> but it will nag you and keep it up to date as best as possible. Although I often find people who just keep saying no. And I'm like, why haven't you loaded that? Well, I don't know what will happen. Or I don't think my phone can do it. And there's a lot of uh, discussions that I have with people explaining it's not just about new features. It's about their security updates in there and things that they patch if they find things. And it's just like your desktop where that's concerned. But the way that iOS is managed, most people, the majority of people are on, you know, the two top levels of the operating system. It's not spread out like it is with Android. So how about Android updates there, David? Well, I can only speak for what I use. And I've got a Samsung. Um, I'm using a Note 3. Uh, My wife has, I think, an S4. Five, I think. You mean you don't so, know what it has? Aren't you the family IT support? <sighs> yeah, I do. Um, but I don't do too much on the, the phones. They, I mean, pretty much run themselves. As long as you can get to Facebook, she don't care about anything else. <laughs> 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 that's, that's all it's for, text messaging and Facebook. Everybody has the thing so, that they need. Yeah. Now, mine, on the other hand, I mean, I, I can, you know, mine can crank my car and, yeah. and drive to the store and cook me breakfast. I can but all um, kinds of cool things on mine. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. It actually automatically takes people, which drives people crazy. But, <laughs> 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 but um, on the Android phone, on mine anyway, it will alert you that there are updates out there. Now, I don't know what frequency that is. Like if an update comes out today, I don't know if it's going to let me know today or if it's going to let me know next week or when that is. I usually go in about once a month and just you know click on check for updates. As a matter of fact, I did that this morning because I had noticed that I also have a, an Android tablet and my Android tablet had an update last night. So I just happened to say, hey, I wonder if my phone has any. So I checked it this morning and lo and behold, there were three security updates. So I had them, had them applied this morning. So it will prompt you and it will tell you that they're out there. However, it's not a bad idea to, you know, every so often just go in and, and tell it to check for updates just in case you might have missed something. Yeah. So it does tell you things. Uh, you have to participate a bit. And the other thing about Android devices is, you know, so many people have these devices and they, they do the same thing. I don't want to update. I don't need to update, blah, blah. But because of the way Android's functions, that flexibility allows the vendors to make their own changes to the operating system and have their own versions that are a little bit tweaked from the standard version. So you have to know which flavor of Android you're on because sometimes things happen like the older, the really old ones, and apparently there's people still on them. The really old versions, they may not be able to fix problems in it. So I know that the uh, wipe, which we'll talk about in a little bit, is uh, on some old Android devices. You can't; It doesn't get rid of everything. But, I mean, those mm-hmm. are the really old releases. And if you're using one of those, I'm not sure how if you're using it for business. So, yeah. yeah. And, two, the thing about Android, if people aren't aware, is that iOS is pretty much iOS. I mean, it's made by Apple, it's on Apple products, and that's it. Whereas Android is made by Google, and it's on all types of products. And so you can have multiple different types and versions of Android, even though the core may be the same, it may not actually function completely the same from vendor to vendor. Right. So it can be vastly different. So you could have a, and that's why you can, you see some of these El Cheapo phones or tablets out there and then you know they're android and you can get a tablet for 79 bucks and then there's another android tablet that's 479 dollars and people look at it and go what's the difference it could be a lot yeah there's a lot of differences a huge yeah. difference in, in a lot of cases and sometimes it's just what the device is the processing power of the device because you get something that's so so slow and they're saying android slow no android yeah. running on that device is slow Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, when people give me an Android phone, they're like, do you know Android? And you can know Android. It's just like you. If, you, if somebody hands you another Android phone, you've got to go, okay, where, where is it on this? Because mm-hmm. I know it's on here. And where is it? And it's how they've implemented it. So know that Android has a lot of flavors and you have to do things to keep it up to date. Where iOS has a much more limited flavors, if you will. So, you know, they're right now on 8.0. 
something 1.4 or something like that. But it's the operating system itself, which means if there's a security problem in there, it's a big one. You know, it's just waiting for somebody to use that hole to get in the door. So make Mm -hmm. sure you keep your phones up to date. And I, another thing I try to teach people back in the day when the smartphones were first coming out and people were getting used to them. And the first thing I would teach somebody when I gave them the phone was up until now you had your phone and you had your computer and your phone could do some cool things. Cause used to, you know, you'd have, Oh, I can do text messages and I can do maybe calendar and a little bit, you know, a few things on the phone phone, but a smartphone is a computer that can also make phone calls. It's not mm-hmm. a phone that does cool stuff. It's a computer that can make phone calls, and you need to think about it that way. Mm-hmm. And you know, we've talked about this in the past, how crazy it is when you think about the fact that the phone that you're carrying around in your pocket is more computer power than what NASA had to land a man on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, unless you want to get into the conspiracies of whether or not we ever went to the moon, then we could talk. (laughs) That could be another podcast, maybe. Yeah, it's um, too bad they couldn't do a selfie up there. (laughs) (laughs) Post it on Facebook. (laughs) Yeah, see if Periscope works up there on the moon. (laughs) That'd be great. Yeah, we were there. So, as the process goes, just like you secure your computers that are in your office, your phones are computers too. And that's why we talk about having to secure them and be aware of how they can become the way into your networks and your systems and your data based on what you're accessing when you're on them. So mm-hmm. whether it's a phone call you're making, it's tracking that information differently than it does when you used to make a phone call. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, let's talk about encryption. Let's do it. On an iPhone, if you go in to set a password, then once you set a password, it automatically turns on what Apple calls data encryption, uh, data protection, which is the encryption of the device. And there's another option in there that says, Set that if there's X number of failed logins, it just wipes the device automatically. So you can set the passcode and then set the number that the failure is. Well, when I tell people to turn that on, in fact, I was just telling somebody this week and they're like, but what if I can't remember my code? (laughs) (laughs) You know, they're thinking about themselves wiping. I was like, how many times do you enter it? Like before you work it out? I don't know, two or three. Well, set it more than that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but it's important to realize if you're going to use the four digit passcode, you should definitely use the wipe after a certain number of failed logins. And, you know, set it at six. You know, I can set them lower, but, you know, six is still a good one. You're not going to mess it up that much. And uh, that's another reason not to let your children play with your phone. Now, Dutton, I know used to iOS, when you you know entered it in so many times wrong, it would like lock you out for five minutes. And then the next time it would be 15 minutes. And then it was like an hour. <laughs> Does it still uh, do that? Uh, not that I know of, but I haven't looked at that. I mean, I just set the wipe and set the passcode. And you can uh, also I- set the passcode to a complex one. So you don't have to do just the four-digit number. So, you know, mine... I've even done alphanumeric before, but that, you know, just testing it out, that became too much because you're switching in between numbers and all that. You can't get logged in. But if I had some really important data on that phone, you better believe I'd have one of those kind of passcodes. So Mm -hmm. I do at least have an eight digit number instead of a four on mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is an option. And many people don't realize that you can make it a longer number. Okay. So that makes it encrypted and then you're set and recommend setting the failed login. So now here's Android Boy. <laughs> Android Boy. <laughs> so on Android, you can encrypt the device and it is in the settings. Now, I can't tell you exactly where to go because, like we talked about earlier, depending on what type of phone you have, what manufacturer and all that good stuff, it might be in a different place. But you should be able to go into your settings and there should be a feature or function somewhere, either on its own, which says encryption, or maybe under the security tab. But there should be something in there where you can click on 
the ability to encrypt that device. And when you encrypt that device, it's going to encrypt everything in that device and it will take some time for that to happen. And then everything will be encrypted. And every time you turn your phone on, I know most of us leave our phones on 24 seven, but if the phone turns off and you turn it back on, you'll have to enter in that encryption key or that passcode in order to get your phone boot. So if uh, for some reason you encrypt it and you don't turn it off for three months and then all of a sudden the battery goes dead and then you turn it back on after you charge it, <laughs> you better hope you didn't forget that passcode that you put on there. <laughs> so or you won't be able to get in it. And also on, on my particular device, the, you can have it on the lock screen settings to where if you have somebody enter in the passcode incorrectly 10 times, then it will automatically wipe the device so you can set it to do that if you want to and what i mean by wipe the device is it puts it back to factory settings just like the first time you took it out of the box and turned it on wipes it clean yeah and that wipe capability is very important when you think about uh your mobile devices because even just all of the contact information that you have for your business, your family, you know, even if, if if it has patients on there, that's information that can be used because that's confirmed phone numbers and confirmed names and addresses. Mm -hmm. So know that they just suck that data off of there and put it somewhere. It's not like they're going to start. you got to think of it bigger than somebody stole my phone and now they're going to start using my phone. Yes, that can happen. They're going to see my picture. <laughs> 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 oh crap <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I can see you now <laughs> be worried <laughs> yeah so what about uh, let's talk about mobile device management because that's something that people may have heard of especially in the IT field you definitely heard of it and you may actually offer mobile device management some people see that as uh, in the acronym MDM and what mobile device management is, because there is, it's actually built in, some of it is actually built into what you can do on your own, but it's just the ability to, to manage that device remotely. And some of that means being able to do remote locks where you can lock the screen remotely. You know, so if you don't even have the phone in your hand, let's say it's got, you know, stolen or somebody else has it for whatever reason, you can lock that device. You can wipe the device remotely. Sometimes you can ping the device to find out where it's at, so it'll show you a location. What else can you do by just by default through like iOS remotely? Well, it depends on which apps you've turned on because mm -hmm. if you're using like Find My iPhone or Find My Friends, and you can turn on Find My iPhone and uh, put it on a a lock state that says, "I think I've lost it." but I'm looking for it, so don't wipe it, which just means you can't get into it. You can't use it until I unlock it from Find My iPhone. Mm -hmm. That is uh, handy for people like me because I have a habit of losing things. But Find My iPhone is such a really cool app, and it lets you do a lot of those pieces. But to me, the mobile device management, while a lot of it's built in pieces and parts, the parts that come with the iPhone itself, that's primarily the features of Find My Friends or Find My iPhone, depending on how you have it configured. Mm -hmm. But when you look at, for example, Google Apps for Work, that has built into it the capability of managing the mobile devices that you allow access into your Google Apps, which, you know, so many people get email on their phones. You know, it's part of using it as a computer. And those mobile device management tools, obviously Google is going to have much more robust features for Android, but for iOS as well. So we can remote wipe and we can uh, shut it out of uh, the access to things until we find things and, and all of those pieces and parts. So that's an essential piece of it. But generally, there's an app for that. <laughs> <laughs> And where mobile device management really makes a lot of sense is whenever you're in a business environment and you're allowing your employees to bring their devices in and use them. And because you can manage all those devices under one umbrella. So 
instead of having, okay, you got, you know, Susie over here and, you know, she can remote wipe her device if she logs in her stuff. And then you got, you know, Jennifer can do hers under her stuff. This is where you kind of come in and you say, okay, you know, whether it's an IT provider or whatever, they can come in and put all those devices under the same dashboard so that they can control them through policies or tracking or whatever the case might be, depending on what you're doing in your policies. And that's where we get into the next term we want to throw out there, which is the BYOD, which is what, Donna? Bring <laughs> your own device. <laughs> BYOD. BYOD. Okay. Don't you go too far. God. <laughs> <laughs> So bring in your own device, and that's um, that's something that kind of happened over, I guess, maybe the past two or three years where companies, instead of saying, you know, we're going to provide you with smartphones or we're going to provide you with tablets or whatever, they're starting to say, hey, you've already got these devices, so why should we pay for additional device you have to carry around so you don't have to carry two smartphones on you or whatever? So just carry what you have. But in order for you to do that, we got to have a BYOD, a bring your own device policy because you can't just let people wildly walk in with all these devices because they can be uh, they can be hacked they can be cracked <laughs> they can be that's one thing we haven't even talked about yet yeah they can be jailbroken they you know all this stuff where you know they can really get in and do anything they want there's so many different things you can do to somebody's phone that it's amazing i mean you can remotely control somebody's phone from somewhere else you can and if they're connected to your network then they then have access to your network and all that because they're walking in and they're probably connecting to your wi-fi that you have mm -hmm. and you know they're not connecting to a separate wi-fi which they should be doing i think you know connect to a separate wi-fi and not your main wi-fi that you're using you know internally so talk about some of the rules donna to follow in general when you create a BYOD policy. But yeah, I mean, an, another point is a lot of that is driven by employees wanting to use, you know, I use Android and you're wanting me to use BlackBerry or I use, you know, the vice versa. And people don't want to have to keep up with the two phones and figure out and learn different things because it just, it's a juggling act. So a lot of that is driven by the desires of the people working on there, not just the companies doing it. So it's kind of a win-win for everybody from that perspective. However, everything beyond there, those rules are very important. And to me, if you don't take the time to set down those rules and you start just letting everybody do this, you're just opening it up for some really bad things to take place. So rules that need to be in place, such as, are you going to require them to let you put an MDM on it, mobile device management, just like we talked about, because the nicer mobile device management tools, it's a tool that's done by your IT company or you have this dashboard and you actually load an app on the phone that allows you to set some controls like is the software up to date is the setting for requiring a passcode and it'll actually in some cases let you take over the phone and say you've got to have a passcode you can't turn it off mm -hmm. and you've got to set the remote wipe capabilities and you've got to do all of these other things and if you load that app it forces all of those settings to what you want it to be so there's there's a lot of advantages to doing that because otherwise you've got to do some audits on every phone to make sure people are doing what they're supposed to do so if you don't have a tool that's doing it and you want well you have to have some level of security and if you don't you're just you know out there with your britches down, as we say. <laughs> but, you know. To Another thing, too, around security that everybody needs to be aware of is you do need to have some type of antivirus or security app or something on your phone. And trust me, I don't give a flip if you're using an Apple device. <laughs> they can be hacked and they can be infected. So, you know, get rid of that thinking that, oh, if I buy an Apple or iMac or iPhone, I can't be hacked. I can't get a virus. You know, that's that's bull. You can. So you need to be looking at how you're going to protect yourself with mobile phone security apps as well. Well, and that's part of doing the risk analysis is to say, what is my risk 
in this particular area. So, you know, when HIPAA says you have to do a security risk analysis and there's a risk analysis that looks at the big picture of your business, but you're also supposed to then do drill down kind of risk analysis, which is what this would do for you is to decide things like, do I want to accept the risk of a potential malware issue on my phone or do I want to put some sort of antivirus on there like David says? So it's Yeah, just do what David says. Do what David, <laughs> <laughs> should we change the name of the podcast? Do what David says. <laughs> dot com. Dot com. <laughs> Don't think I won't be registering that when I get off here. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but anyhow. My wife will be the only one I send it to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That one's see, light see off. That? I'll be like, look, it's a, it says so right there on the website. <laughs> That'll, that'll be rejected. <laughs> uh, but my uh, big thing, and I, I have this recommendation as a policy, whether it's people working from home or using their phones from work, because you have the same issue, people doing work from home, sometimes they use their home computers. So if the company pays for a computer or a phone, then in that case, you can set all the rules and you should set all the rules about what can and cannot be done on that equipment. Don't leave it be where the kids can play on it because I don't know about you, David, but to me, kids on a computer or a phone or anything can just destroy it. <laughs> just, mm-hmm. just destroy it, particularly on a computer. They just click yes, 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 because they want mm-hmm. to get to some game or something. And the mm-hmm. next thing you know, my young nephew's running down the stairs with his laptop. And Donna, and Donna, there's naked ladies, and I don't know how they got there. <laughs> he was very sure young. you did. <laughs> he was young. He was like 10. And it, I tracked it back, and he was just trying to get to a game and said yes too many times. So Yeah, that'll always get you in trouble when you say yes to me. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> the look on his face is uh, priceless. But... It can go horribly awry, and it's not necessarily, I mean, this kid, he was actually going after a game. I know he was. I was able to figure it out myself. Not most people, you know, may not be able to track it, but I could see what he was doing in his history and how they were tricking him into things. And then once that gets loaded, I don't know if you've ever sat down at a computer, but you turn it on and you try to open the browser and it just starts flying stuff. You know, just stuff starts opening like mad. That's the next step where they've essentially taken over and they're driving traffic somewhere. Well, the same kinds of things can happen on your phone. When kids are playing on the on your phone and they want to download a game or any of those things, you don't know exactly what that app is doing and what it's tracking in the background and what it may be tying into. Plus, <laughs> I had I was doing a class one time and I talked about how you can't text in an open text, patient information. You just can't. It's wrong. Don't do it. And somebody raised their hand. They said, well, I need to get information to the doctor who's already at the hospital. I don't want to interrupt him with a patient. So I sent him a text saying, see Mrs. Smith in room, blah, 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 blah. She's having such and such a problem. I was like, okay, well, that's PHI. <laughs> we don't do that. Don't do that ever again. But she's like, why Why is that a big deal? I have a passcode on my phone. It's done. And he has a passcode <laughs> on his phone. It's locked. And I said, do you ever let your kids play with your phone? Well, of course I do. Then I just stared at her. <laughs> it took a minute. Your kids get in there and screw around with your messages. They can send them somewhere inadvertently because they're playing with stuff. You know, or they can send it to somebody else or delete something important because you let your kids on the phone. And, you know, we have rules because, you know, I'm a very good aunt and I let the children do certain things. And if they are doing anything, I open the app that I want them to do something in because, you know, help them with stuff or there's some games we play together. I open the app. They're not allowed to go outside that app. They're not allowed to say yes to anything. And they stay within my site the whole time if I even let them do anything. And I don't have any stuff. I have access to stuff on my phone, which is why I secure it. But they can't even get into any of that stuff if they wanted to. But even though they have been lectured from the time that they could push the button on a printer, they can't play with Aunt Donna's toys. (laughs) 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 
I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's leave that alone. We, we can play the yeah. video games together. That's it. Well, I mean, not only that, but it, you, I mean, you shouldn't you shouldn't send text messages anyway. Not you know, unless you're using a secure platform. So, I mean, even if you have it locked on both sides and your kids aren't playing with it, you know, you still can't do that just in by in the inherent default. Right. It's just like a text her, messaging. You know, yeah. You shouldn't do it. And it's in, you know, clear text. So when it's transmitted, that text is still going to the servers and sitting places and sitting on the phone unencrypted. So if somebody steals it, you're done. If you don't have the wipes and all of that kind of stuff, then you're in serious trouble. And with the passcodes, it really doesn't mean, you know, it's kind of like the HIPAA rule that says just because it's encrypted, it's still a breach. It's just not one that requires reporting. Mm -hmm. And the BYOD policy as well in, in mobile device management and all that, one thing people need to understand too is it's not just about smartphones and tablets but that's also a lot of this also bleeds over into laptops as well oh absolutely because it it's a mobile device well, you yeah. can take it and go with it so you know all these things we're talking about you know they apply to your laptop as well people can yeah. get into those the same way they can steal them the same way you know if you've got employees bringing laptops to work uh, i see this sometimes drives me crazy because somebody will say my laptop's faster than the one i got to work so i'm just going to bring mine and they're introducing anything and everything that's on that laptop into the network. They're plugging that thing in and it's, you know, it's infected like crazy. And guess what? The first thing that happens is the virus says, oh, cool, I can propagate. Yeah. I'm listening <laughs> to you just, using dollar words in a 50 cent sentence. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I can propagate. I can propagate. <laughs> <laughs> look at him. I can propagate. <laughs> but yeah, the, people don't understand that those uh, infected machines are just really, as soon as you connect them to something where it can go explore, that's exciting to it. <laughs> to the, the <laughs> malware gets all excited and off it goes trying to do it. And, and you know, the other thing is they're starting to get ransomware on uh, mobile devices now. It's it's the new frontier. So. Things oh, yeah, are happening wow. and they're doing ransomware. You've got to be careful about what you're doing on your phone. And then one other thing on the BYOD where I mentioned, you know, you lose the phone, that needs to be part of your policy. If the phone gets gone, it got gone. <laughs> if it's lost, it's stolen, whatever, it's just like anything else. You need to report it ASAP if you've ever made a single phone call, if you've ever used it for business. And especially yeah. the people that take photos on their cameras, on their phones for, oh, let me send this to the doctor so they can see what this infection looks like. Mm -hmm. Now, I can send it to the doctor if I want to send it, but you can't send it, turn around, send it to somebody else the same way. So, so tell your patients to send it to the doctor. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Here, just, can you just send this right here? And take a picture with your phone yeah. and you send it. You do it. You're okay with it not being secure, right? So <laughs> Sign these papers. There's a lot of things that can happen. And, and also know that allowing people to have their phones at work, there's actually breaches that have occurred having your phone at work. Uh, the famous one uh, that uh, I often talk about is in uh, Florida, a uh, McDonald's manager broke up a ring of identity theft that was using the hospital data. And they had uh, McDonald's manager noticed a car that had been sitting in his parking lot for a long time with two guys in it. He started to get worried about it because it's been there too long. And they weren't doing anything. They just weren't doing anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> At the McDonald's parking lot. And so he calls the police. They come. They find the two guys. are sitting there uh, stealing the Wi-Fi from the McDonald's with laptops, filing false tax returns with uh, pictures of screens from the hospital system near my hospital. Turns out there was a person that had volunteered to work at the hospital, was going around, and every time there was a screen up, take a picture of it. Mm. Take a picture of it. So now I've got IDs. I got all the things that I need. And they were volunteering. They weren't even getting paid, but they were getting paid because they were making, you know, 50 bucks a picture or the, I don't know, some ungodly amount when you think about what they were able to do. So 
keep in mind that allowing people to bring their phones and the cameras and all of those kind of things, it's opening you up in a lot of ways. So there's more to it than just the security of the phone itself. It's that the phone is even there because it can connect to the Wi-Fi, just like David said, and go, oh, I can propagate. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) And it can, uh, there's Bluetooth connectivity and all those things that can happen that allow it to spread problems or access things you don't want them accessing. Absolutely. I agree. Oh, oh. (laughs) And we do what David says, and he agrees. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> so that takes us into, you know, backing it up. And a lot of people say, well, I just don't worry about it. And I can't tell you the number of people who have that attitude until they lose everything on their phone. And then they freak out because they realize just how much that matters. And if you're backing up your phone, make sure that you have it backed up in a way that it's encrypted. Um, There's some celebrities, I'm sure, that would uh, explain (laughs) that to you, how that happens, because you can get into their backups in certain ways. So if you're going to do a phone without a backup, you need to really think it through. And if you're going to do a backup, then you also need to make sure how that's done. And that should be part of your risk management analysis, as well as your BYOD rules. Absolutely. And I don't know about yours, but my, my phone backs up automatically. Yeah. Does yours do that? Yeah. Yep. So like once a month or whatever, I'll get a thing that says, oh, we backed you up. <laughs> well, and, you know, because we use Google Apps, everything's kind of syncing with Google Apps all the time. And then I have a backup of the phone itself. And, you know, you back up your backup. I have a backup of the Google app. I back up everything. Mm-hmm. Just, I've got so much, you know, just like you, I'm on Google Apps and I'm so entrenched in that platform that there's like nothing on my laptop. There's nothing on my phone. Right. I mean, I, there's really, I mean, everything I, I have could crash and, and as long as Google's up, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the way that we're functioning, you know, Google well, Alphabet. But if you're going to sink or sell, at least you're doing it with a, a pretty big name is the way I look at it. But you can also, you know, do the same kind of method with uh, Office 365. And there's some other platforms that do similar things. Uh, Zoho is a big one. And you can build all that online so that you're not storing these things on devices. But you still need to worry about the fact that you're accessing them from the devices. So you've got to make sure that if the phone is ever in somebody else's hands, they can't get in to the same information. Mm-hmm. And that takes us to the last piece is we talked about a little bit, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't understand that free Wi-Fi is you get what you pay for. And there's a lot of different ways that you can secure that. But be aware, if you're doing stuff for work, don't do it on a free Wi-Fi. Not unless you're absolutely certain that the connection you make, the second connection is encrypted. So don't go to McDonald's and sit in the parking lot and use their Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly they didn't care if it was encrypted. <laughs> the other thing that can happen is Bluetooth can allow people to connect to you in a public spot. So if you are sitting there discoverable uh, on your Bluetooth, so you need to understand that a lot of people forget. They think Bluetooth just makes your headset work or a few things like they hear about a Bluetooth printer and they're like, wow, I can print from my phone or something. But actually, Bluetooth is another form of wireless communication between devices within roughly 30 feet of each other. Mm -hmm. So it's not just something that makes me have a wireless headset. I can connect all kinds of things via Bluetooth. It's not something that you just leave on willy-nilly. So make sure you understand if you're in public spaces, especially that you turn it off unless you need it is what most people that are uber security conscious do. And then another feature that it depends a lot on your data plan that you have is that you can turn on like a personal hotspot. And I use that. I don't know about you, David, but I use that all the time. I set my personal hotspot up and tie my laptop right into it, and then do whatever I want from my laptop using my phone's data plan. So it's really cool that I can be at the airport or I can be anywhere, and instead of using the free Wi-Fi, I'm using my own data plan and not tied into their stuff. And a lot of times it's even faster than theirs, Mm, but uh, depending on the signal. But you got to keep in mind, I turn mine off. I turn that functionality off 
as soon as I'm done using it. Even though there's a passcode you have to enter, I don't even want it on. I don't want to find out after I've been hit with it, somebody found a way to crack into that. Mm -hmm. And two, if you have a Wi-Fi access point within your business, then you need to make sure your IT provider or IT person, if you have one on staff, they need to have that segmented out so that if you have a guest Wi-Fi, that it is separate from Wi-Fi that you might be using in your practice so that the, the machines can't talk to each other. Yeah. The machines like to talk to each other. That's why we have networks. Mm-hmm. They look just for like people little- to talk to them just like other social media sites. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to be left alone. They want to find everybody they can talk to. It's part of the convenience factor that's also a security issue. So on the final note, everybody needs to understand that there is a completely new frontier for hackers and ransomware and malware, and it is growing at a rapid pace. And so there are a lot of things that have to be done around that to make sure you don't become a victim. And in most cases, it just takes a little bit of diligence. It's not hard stuff to do, but you do need to be aware of what needs to be done. And this is where having someone that's in the IT community, having a HIPAA compliant IT provider, this is where they come in handy because they keep up with stuff like that. So you don't have to. You can do the business of doing the business and not have to worry about your IT stuff. Hey, you can just enjoy the features and functions and convenience of mobile technology without having to suffer the consequences of not securing it. Yeah. So don't take the ostrich ostrich (laughs) approach. (laughs) The ostrich (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> something's going on with you today i don't know, I know. what it is i got up too early i guess oh no <laughs> everybody else is uh, winding up and i'm winding down <laughs> so uh, anyway with that being said uh we invite you to shoot on over to our website at help me with where you can leave a voice mail or you can send us a email and if you would ask us a question, we may even feature that question on a future podcast. And if you want to leave a voice message, but you don't want us to play your voice message, then just say so. And we won't. Uh, we'll just say you were scared. And, and didn't do it. <laughs> so you don't want to hear your voice on the air. Yeah. So just say, yeah, don't play my voice or I'll hunt you down and kill you. <laughs> we don't like our voices either on the air, but we do it anyway. Yeah. So uh, also, we'd invite you to go to iTunes, please, and review our podcast and leave us a five-star review and tell us how wonderful it is. Go ahead and do that now. I'll wait. Go right ahead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, I won't, but um, if you'll do that for us, we appreciate it. And until next week, everyone have a great week. Bye. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims. The show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.